uh, welcome everybody back to uh, the Siegel Talks. Uh, it's week five and um, my name is Frank Henschker and I'm the director of the Siegel Center. We are here at the Graduate Center CUNY of the City University in New York City. And um, it's been uh, quite a journey around the world to hear voices uh, from our fellow artists, uh, from creators of theater and performance and uh, we listen to them because we do think it is significant and important to, to tune in and uh, hear what the mood is, the atmosphere, thoughts, uh, how moments are experienced and what consequences it might have for work. And um, it is always important to listen to, to the artists. They are being on the right side of justice or right side of history, right side of progress. And um, if one listens to them, uh, as I do think uh, many, complicated moments in history could have been avoided. And now again, it's a moment of crisis, uh, of deep uh, consequences for the entire world. We are connected like we've never been connected before. And um, as we uh, wrote in our uh, little statement, in case you saw it here, we went back to the old bright sentence that new times need new forms of theater. And today we have a, a, a great ensemble with us, a great collective uh, of artists or journalists, architects, social architects, uh, social sculptors. Um, it is the really a great Rimini protocol uh, from Germany. Um, uh, most of you might know about their work. If not, please do, do look it up. They have found new forms. They have found new ways of uh, showing, creating, and participating in, in performance, in theater site-specific word street promises and um, I can't wait to hear from uh, Helgard Haug and Stefan Kegi and Daniel Wenzel who are here um, with us. It's week five, we have tomorrow Guy Regis Jr. from uh, uh, Haiti, Judith Miller will translate from NYU, Jalila Bakar from Tunisia is on Wednesday, Peter Sellers, the American, great American director and opera director will be on Thursday and Oscar Eustace, who runs the public theater, will be there with Tony Torn, who runs a 20-seat theater out of his house. So we got an insight also um, from New York. But first of all, uh, welcome, Rimini Protocol. Hello. Thank you. <clears throat> so you can all hear me, and uh, I hope all is well. So maybe just tell me, wh where are you guys at the moment? Maybe Helgard and Stefan Daniel, where are you and what time is it? It's six o'clock in the evening, and I'm back in Berlin. I spent a couple of weeks or yeah, uh, extended time in the countryside, uh, in, like close to Berlin, but um, not in, in the city and uh, in Brandenburg. <laughs> and um, now I'm back for a couple of days and uh, there's been some new regulations in Berlin just starting this Monday, like um, there are some schools open. So my son goes to school again. Um, and there is the duty to wear a mask in the public transport, which changes a bit the atmosphere in the city. So everybody has masks in Berlin on the streets? Well, no, it's Kreuzberg where I live, so not everybody, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, but in the public transport, even there, like people don't really, not, not everybody's wearing them and it's okay, it's accepted, but the majority of the people majority are doing it now. Incredible. Yeah, and there's a fashion going on, like which is the nicest mask uh, yeah stefan where are you i'm in uh, switzerland uh, lausanne where i was rehearsing until three days before the well actually three days before my opening of my new piece here in theatre vidi uh, the lockdown interrupted our rehearsals and i decided to stay on this side of the border if i went back to berlin i would have to spend two weeks in quarantine um uh, regulations here are a bit more loose. I just come back from Lake of Geneva and I had a swim and there's quite some people without masks um, holding respectable distances, but, uh, but still uh, you, you kind of guess a, a certain multitude of people. Yeah, did you swim with your mask on? No. No mask, but also no surfboard, it's hanging above me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's tough on this lake. Yeah, yeah, to surf. That's, that is that is great. And uh, Daniel, where are you at the moment? Uh, I, I'm supposed to be in Greece, but I ended up in Berlin, uh, like uh, a few days before the curfew, uh, before the lockdown. Um, I just came with my daughter anyways, and then we decided to stay because 
um, it went step by slice by slice. They said that schools might open later again and so on. So now we're here since already five weeks <clears throat> and it was the right decision. Um, because in Athens, especially the, the, I guess due to the smaller amount of um, um, intensive care beds and stations, the regulations are really harsh and uh, you can only go out by permission that you receive by SMS and the, now over Greek Easter, drones have been flying around everywhere and people would not be allowed to even drive with their cars, you know. So I think it's better for us here uh, for life and work at the moment. Yeah, yeah but they're proud. They, they, uh, I mean, they, in, in Greece, almost nothing happens, almost no casualties and uh, really a very low rate of uh, infection, infections. Also in terms of uh, per capita, they are much better than even Germany. Hmm. That's uh, remarkable. And yeah, yeah, well, Easter is such a big holiday in Greece, so <clears throat> that's quite uh -huh. a, quite something to have. Yeah, the family of my daughter, they were secretly meeting some days before Easter and not leave the house anymore because it was clear on Easter you can't drive. So they locked them all themselves in. Of course, uh, breaking quite some regulations because they all met <laughs> in a smaller group though. But anyways, uh, yeah, it was a very, very different, different Easter this year. So like early Christian communities, people were meeting Easter in hideouts and in secrecy. But how, <clears throat> how, how does it feel for you all? You're such a, in a way, cosmopolitan global ensemble. You now you're in your homes. Um, how do you guys feel? Yeah, normally we would have been uh, in New York, so uh, this feels bad, like not, um, yeah, to... You would have been yeah. at BAM last week, right? Yes. Yeah. You were supposed is... to come to the Seagull. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, that's a show. It's called 100% Brooklyn in this case, so 100% City, like is the, the uh, overtitle. Um, and it's 100 people on stage that represent the city or the... The uh, district, like it's the first time that we, uh, well, they convinced us to focus on Brooklyn and to say Brooklyn is a city itself somehow, and you get all the diversity that you want, um, mm. that we normally are looking for, because we try to invite like the whole city being represented by those 100 people. Um, yeah, and the casting was going on. So they were already, I don't know, Stefan, you know this better. 94 people, Nin I think. 92? Were, um, okay. 94 people already were, were uh, subscribed to take part in this event. And, you know, they are to be found in such a way that they exactly match the statistics. So there were 52, or there, there would have been in the end 52 women on stage and only 48. Um, men and there would have been, uh, we already had, I think, one, two, four, six, I'm just looking at the statistics here again, eight uh, under nine-year-old kids on stage, um, four were still missing and there were a lot of different nationalities, as you can guess, uh, if you know Brooklyn, uh, we had, what was it, 12 Asian uh, performers, like born in Asia and Hispanics was 19 and um, more actually black American uh, than white American. And they were all what was it the that to find these people. Uh, Bam was already casting since, what is it, late November, I think. So it's really, it's, I mean, we've had many cancellations of tours, but this one was a, a particularly hard one because so much work was already done and so many people were eager to, to make it happen. Yeah, and yeah. just everything prepared. And then it was clear, like I, I actually got my, like I went to the um, consulate to get the visa, which is quite a hard thing to do. <laughs> it makes you apply for hours on online documents and so on and queue and get there. And, and that was the, the very morning where I said, okay, no, like no uh, Europeans are allowed in the States at the moment. So it was a bit absurd because we were just ready to go and do this show. Um, yeah, and it's always like, it's always a very nice show to get to know a city as well. Like, I mean, we've been to New York and to Brooklyn as well and presented work there, but it's like, it's like um, a bit like a, a space where you place questions in. So the most part of the, Piece is con uh, consisting of questions that we ask the 100 people on stage and then have different um, modes to, to answer the questions. Like 
either with yes and no going to one and the other side or with colored cardboards um, or different uh, performative um, elements and that's always very exciting like if you start preparing for the city and then wonder what is what are the essential questions and what is really important to debate and which really needs to be displayed as well so it's an easy way to display all these uh, contradictions of a society and obviously in such a situation it's so exactly the contrary of what's allowed now because it would have brought been brought how many more definitely more than thousand people would have been sitting in the incredible BAM theater um, and they react to it as well because it exchanges a part of the audience um, as these people that are most of them obviously not theater makers uh, normally not going to an institution like BAM to see anything and now they will be there and now they will be bringing their people. It's um, one, actually the only really piece that we have that really get, makes a huge amount of people gather. And at the moment, nobody knows when it's such a thing happens. <clears throat> That's not possible. Yes, and I think the idea is to have 100 people who represent statistically the city. And um, as they said, you know, the majority of Africa is, uh, is a, a black a color community and then the white Asian Americans and others. It would have been fascinating to see that, that new approach um, for you, for you all, and maybe uh, Daniel also, you know, would, do you feel something is is uh, changing in your thinking, or do you feel you are more or less you're saying, yeah, we always did something that uh, uh, dealt with such issues? Do you feel um, in your artistic work um, there are some reformatting going on on the hard drive in your brain? <laughs> Well, <clears throat> basically, we're actually pretty busy uh, still with um, preparing work that um, um, still might happen at some point later the year or next year, but uh, we, we are still able to kind of work and uh, a lot of our work consists in of consists of writing contexts, uh, concepts. Um, uh, a problem at the moment is to to try to find co-producers because globally every, nobody is really sure when they can work the way they have used to be they used to work um, especially venues and uh, cultural programs festivals and so on so there's a big insecurity that we can also feel because it's not so easy to speak about fundings at the moment but in terms of um, <clears throat> what we're developing there hasn't been a halt so far and yes okay then um, uh, perhaps uh, let, let, let away the financial situation. Um, uh, it is a, a remarkable experience. It is almost like being in the plot of some, you know, performance conceptualist or utopian to say everybody stay home for a moment uh, for, 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 for some weeks and, and see what happens then. You know, it's, it's, in a way, it's, a, it's um, an amazing uh, experiment. Uh, this is how it feels from here. I know that uh, worldwide, it, in, in many, many, many cases, perhaps most of the cases, it doesn't feel like just interesting, but really, really bad. Um, but this is how it looks uh, from my end at the moment. Then, okay, now is a big request for all kinds of um, interactive, um, internet-based, voice over IP, performance formats. Let's see. Um, whether there's a push uh, to to new forms that that will be helpful and and create even once we're once we're <clears throat> uh, able to move and join and meet uh, the way we did before. Clearly, theater is about coming together. That's what um, many people also stress whose works are being streamed now and so on. There have been amazing numbers of clicks for certain lives, uh, no, just streams of videos of performances that might have been on. For, I, I heard yesterday there was one streaming of a Hamlet uh, show in Schaubühne that they had 36,000 uh, viewers which is far more than the, a theater could contain. So this is, this is uh, amazing. But also, of course, these actors would have preferred to you know, perform in front of 700 people live instead, because this is just essential, uh, essentially theater as we know it. 
there are several aspects of it. Now there are, there's on one hand, there's this not being allowed to come together, which hurts really physically sometimes in the evening as I'm at home and I'm normally in a theater in the evening. But um, there's also the not being able to travel that changes our li life very strongly. But that's something we've been a bit busy thinking anyway a lot in the last year. We became 20 years old as a group, not um, <laughs> put privately. Um, and we started reflecting, is this international touring by sending performances around? And so many of our international tours now have been canceled, which has counted, I think, 37 tours, productions, events that we would have hold until the summer have been remarkable. 37 yeah. until end of July, yes. <clears throat> but a bit of this mm. um, impossibility to travel, it, it, it falls together with uh, an, an un with the uncomfortability that we felt already last year, discussing a lot about issues of climate change. Can there be formats of theater where maybe we don't need to travel, where rather the idea travels, where the conversation, where the, the interaction with other continents happens in a way without being there. So that's one project where for it's actually not so uninspiring to be in these times to develop this piece that is supposed to open next year without people traveling, but, but expand, uh, expanding very much the technical writer, the instructions, the, the ways in which in a very local way things can happen that travel from far. In a way, instruction-based art. Um, there are some you know, visual artists who work that they write 10 rules and then uh, people do their own work, their own performance, or like a play, it's been written, but people do something with it and the writer is no longer there. But um, even so, as uh, Daniel said, maybe this all looks like a big Rimini protocol uh, uh, experiment. You know, let's see what happens when uh, the people have to stay at home, like your famous experiments, you restage the climate uh, change debate in a theater, you uh, um, declared the, the main shareholder uh, meeting of Mercedes-Benz as a performance and declared everybody as an actor. Um, you did the famous Wallenstein where you said, we take the structure of the play of the good, but we take people from real life who put it in. Um, is, is there um, 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 something where you think um, this crisis where we have to um, um, find new forms, you know, to, to go through, is that something where you feel, now you're thinking of things you haven't thought before, um, or you say, no, actually what we did already, um, in some ways had, had us prepared us for this? Well, I mean, technically, I think we were prepared. Um, we actually started very, very early when Skype was still not really used by many people. We had a, a um, project launched where a person in India, in Kolkata, is talking to a person wherever, like mainly in Europe, but um, in the US as well. And um, like to, to establish this kind of situation to say, first of all, like it was just only the voice actually uh, talking to a stranger and um, yeah, starting a conversation about where am I and where are you mm -hmm. and um, the reality and uh, situation, the call center agents are actually in their, in their, yeah, in, in the call center. So what does it mean to serve in the back office of, big companies that um, pretend that the call center is just uh, in the neighborhood and to, to go into this, yeah, in, in this theater in a way and be a performer, have, an, have a different name than your personal name, uh, pretend you are in the same time zone, pretend you know what the weather is like and so on. And that's their normal um, reality. And then to stage a play with them where we, we repeat the same situation, like it's two people meeting on a Skype line and then in, a, in the very end, actually, they only saw, they had a moment where they would see each other. And um, we realized that many people, 
they, they really had very, very deep conversations. So um, it was nice actually to have this, um, yeah, intimate situation as well and to talk to a stranger and maybe use this situation to reveal something that you wouldn't reveal your neighbor or your friend or um, a family member. So that's something that we worked with a lot and where it's clear like in a given situation there's always you can always turn it into something else and you can always create um, a play with it you can create a play with VR um, uh, in, a, in a VR Google world or, and, and so on but um, still I mean what what Daniel mentioned is we normally do theater because we are interested in social interaction and that's that's really something I miss as well, where um, sometimes like I'm, I, I do uh, radio plays, for example, where I really enjoy to be with me under my headphones for quite a while and uh, um, or it's times where we do more writing and so on so that the situation I think everybody of us is familiar with as well, like to, to have this personal lockdown for a given time and in a self set time, maybe that's the difference. Um, so yes, I think that's like it's now it's starting to to develop that we think of forms or we think of um, yeah how to take advantage of the situation. That's how, how to twist the situation to something that makes us not just experience the lack of something else. So in a very concrete manner, we talked about maybe picking up this connections that we have to Kolkata where those performers of the piece uh, 12, 14 years ago, were sitting in a call center and, and performing on, one, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to, to hear. And we just started discussing last week. It wasn't at all a planned performance, but we started discussing, could it be maybe in an in-between situation where all the theaters are closed, be an option to make uh, what we call Kolkata at home. So what if the call center operators do home office, or actually they're not even call center operators anymore, but now they would serve from their home. We'll have mm -hmm. to start to find out if their connectivities are good enough, but if that would allow people, because people do a lot of video conferencing, everybody, but normally they do it with their bubble. And the incidental meeting in a theater foyer or on the street is, getting very difficult and uh, much more so in a different country. So maybe could it serve a purpose to put you in an intimate situation with, uh, with somebody in his Indian home, which has obviously a different constellation all together, but in a way is that I find quite fascinating when we talk about immersive scenographies, in a way our homes these days are the scenographies of our life and if we want to talk in the very first instance, at least to people in France and Italy, and I guess in New York, where you have this very strict uh, lockdown rules, then you talk about making theater for that very home. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, the call Calcutta in a Box was, a, I think it was a pioneering um, um, project. And um, I think that we will find and have to perhaps find uh, ways that perhaps digital presence in theaters will be not just in crisis times, but perhaps will be always. People will might have this opera, ballet, drama, but perhaps there will be something, some kind of an online engagement, um, not just for um, crisis times or something that happened. You have done the, the, the radio plays, the walks, um, um, where um, audience members also followed your instructions silently, sometimes they saw something or not. Um, is um, 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 Rimini protocol <clears throat> in a way um, where you prepare to say that is this is a year? Would you work from home? Would you create work? Would you create situations where people who, as you said, don't know each other or don't know what you know or someone else knows, will you create something um, and uh, be an instructor of games from online? Or are you going to wait till you tour again? No, no, no. We. Well, the, 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 the Kolkata at Home project is one we're just starting to develop. You will really do, yeah. Might mm -hmm. offer it because 
In Europe, you have a, a lot of festivals now that are telling us, well, we have to cancel the show, but can we have any kind of format that keeps us connected to our audiences? Because this is a, a need that the theaters feel, that the actors feel, but also that the audience feels, where is their community? And um, some people, you might know that, go together with you to the theater, but many others, you just meet randomly a bit on the way, and can it be a way to, to, to connect and do these things. Another thing I, I did kind of out of a desperation one day here, I started writing a little audio tour for Home Apartments, which now is kind of downloadable on our website. It's just a six minute piece that uses the scenography of the home, of everybody's home, not of a particular home, for you to interact in a, in a, little, in a little audio tour. Um, so more and more, I guess, of these ideas come up now because it finds it, it feels kind of hard to plan things for big audience spaces at the moment because it's so hard to even remember them. They they sound like a thing from the past almost. Yeah. And the next question is, is, is there something that we could invent which is not only involving like this situation, you know, in front of a computer um, equipped with a lot of technology um, and but but maybe something else like your radio plays one one example, but is there, I don't know, I'm sometimes streaming of a little box that you just receive, you know, delivery. And then there is, um, yeah, you get involved into a play and um, maybe just, you know, get instructions what to do with your neighbors, how to open the window and so on. Um, and yeah, I think there are many playful approaches um, of doing this or any kind of balcony theater or there have been balcony exhibitions in Berlin recently and so on. So I think people invent, of course, as this is going on. Um, yeah. And then there is a big question mark to a lot of people trying to guess when is the theater opening again? When will be the, the audiences allowed in again? And what politicians don't have in their vocabulary is that instead of saying, okay, 30 of July, I think is right now, or 30, 1st of August, I think is in the moment, the date when they say until then, no theater is allowed um, whatsoever inside theaters. But on the other hand, it's maybe a good moment to, to think of not opening doors for the big masses. And I'm not necessarily talking about leaving three meters of space between the audiences, but still hold a frontal classical performance because in Switzerland here on the 7th of June, exhibitions will be allowed to have audiences in. I think in Berlin, it's already next week or so um, because obviously museums can have more space. They can handle at least small audiences, which will be then dealt with carefully. I don't know, with gloves and whatever masks. And why don't we use those theater spaces in a way as exhibition spaces then? Um, so that's something I'm thinking a lot and mm -hmm. I'm starting to develop something here with the, the Theater VD in, in Lausanne where we, where we thought maybe we could in a certain way, an audience room, as it, empty as it is, I now and then, I actually now go to the theater and look at it, it's so empty, it's a ghost house. And to think of it as an exhibition of the left behind emptiness, I think mm -hmm. is, uh, could be very productive for maybe an audio tour that we thought to develop in these spaces instead of just leaving them empty all the way. It looks theater almost as a rune, a contemporary perfect shape rune as an object, and to inhabit it in a in a different different way. I think some theaters in France have actors uh, on call, a bit like not from Calcutta but in France, and people call in and ask them, can they read a certain poem? <clears throat> so they're on demand, as <clears throat> on demand acting or uh, uh, reciting them of work. Uh, colleagues from UIS we spoke to in uh, in Taiwan said that apps like Tinder or Friendster and others are encouraging users to use um, the platform, not for dating, but to just meet people, to be out there, so to open uh, the definition 
of it, which might be an idea in a way to say, you know, how can people connect? But I think there still needs somehow a game uh, game director or an inventor of game to make that in a performance uh, um, way. But as they say, they, it does work. Uh, people people um, do to use this in a way of um, um, finding new uh, connections. But of course, it's not uh, in the Rimini sense that you also experience something and learn something um, <clears throat> as a some form um, of, a, um, of a community. Um, by the way, the Taiwanese government gave a lot of money to actually find new ways of forms and to also experiment with digital content. So they gave a remarkable amount of money, I think 160 million. And on top of already existing arts grants for artists to support them, to um, create new ways and to, to, to really experiment and find something that they also globally want to share. It might be of interest for you guys to, to collaborate for one of your things and happy to make a connection. But um, how is it for you? Um, do you get support now from the theaters or from the government? If everything is canceled till August, Germany, as far as I know says, most probably till next summer, there will be no soccer games live. There will be no big audience, which means also operas, big theaters might be the same. In Poland, they said, uh, uh, Tia said it's so fun to be theaters and massage salons are on the first closed and will be the last to open because it's about bodies, about contact. Um, so if it's really long, how, how are you supported? How does that work? You're also freelancers and health insurance and all that. How does, how is that situation in Germany? Well, in the, uh, the, the specific uh, situation of us is that we're found, our office is funded by the Senate of Berlin. So that means the, the basic, say the home based structure is sort of protected as it's funded by the city. For a couple of years or how? Um, yeah, for a couple of years. Um, I think it's a, a range of three years, um, which excludes us, Hegat, Stefan and me. So we normally just, you know, live on what we're uh, earning by the work that we're doing. So that is where we're not, <clears throat> we're not employees of our, com our company or so. However, this is already quite a great uh, situation in which we are because the structure that uh, we need in order to communicate, prepare, um, um, <clears throat> Uh, the things that we're used to doing, um, that is safe in a way. Then there was in Germany, in every county specific um, approach to how to um, protect freelancers in the arts, but also in general from uh, going bankrupt uh, rather soon. Um, and in Berlin, there was, because there's so much work and labor depend, uh, connected to cultural work, um, the <clears throat> cultural senate for uh, senate of the cultures, uh, he even joined the financial um, hearings and uh, pushed himself in a bit and said, "This is so important in Berlin, you can't excuse me." So he um, he made quite a good deal for freelancers in the cultural sector for for starts. So there was like a, um, a rather unbureaucratic uh, donation to everyone in the first round. And now the situation is a bit different. Uh, you can uh, borrow money from the city, but only to cover your professional costs. That means if you have structures that you have to kind of maintain in terms of paying rent or insurance for the company, stuff like that. But as a private, as a person yourself, um, for, for on that level, it's not clear. Um, how a continuation would be managed. So th that is that is yet to come. There are debates. There has been a federal minister of cultures who didn't really raise her voice in that respect and uh, is rather also on hold and waits uh, how the situation develops and um, how soon things could get back to say semi normal or so. Um, so we're all kind of waiting uh, a bit and see how long this takes. Yeah, I guess important is actually what you mentioned before, like that the appointments for the future are hard to, to make. And that's a bit more tragic, like, because um, now, of course, we, we think of, or we, we are in the process of applications and fundings and so on. And there, after Easter, like I, I really felt like the situation had changed from in the beginning where every, like our partners, they would say, yeah, that's a crisis. We we keep on going and so on. And, and suddenly I think they probably received 
other like um, signs or messages as well, like from from the government to 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 um, yeah to not make too many appointments for the future. And um, so that's that's bad, I think. Like that's really tragic in a way because otherwise now we could yeah we could go actually for for making concepts and and trying to prepare for work that could happen like as soon as uh, venues and theaters are open again and there i feel like now everybody and it's especially i mean we are we are it's what we call it the fringe or the off scene or free a free group um and our structure like we are safe on that side like the office and so on but we can't produce a single project without any additional money that we have to make applications for. So if that like chain or this food chain is, is interrupted, it's, it's, it will be really difficult. This is really a tough um, situation where, where you see the difference in a very harsh way suddenly between the whole city theater system, which in Germany is very you know, almost 200 uh, state theaters that have a big amount of fixed employees, uh, all from carpenter shop until actors and management and so on. And for these theaters, obviously, it's a crisis. They miss their audience. They don't get the applause and so on. And they can't work now. But they are sure that next year, whenever the curtain is able to rise again, they can just keep working because they don't need to go through all these application processes. And the fringe scene, which in, especially in a city like Berlin has been so much encouraged to take their own initiative to develop new formats and so on. A lot of these people that are working also in a loose connection with us, scenographers, dramaturgs, uh, technicians, they feel a bit left alone by the situation because suddenly, oh, oh, they realize being independent really when it comes hard on hard, it kind of, you have no insurance for what's going on. But I guess it's the case for theater makers in many, many countries around the world. Yeah. So in a way, it's not existential <clears throat> in the moment as it is uh, tragic as in the moment in India or in Egypt, uh, in Lebanon, as we hear, but still also in Germany, artists who, as you say, are part of the free scene, whatever the definition is, or the, the fringe. Um, hard to imagine that you think of yourself as Remedy at the fringe. You know, we think it's such a great company that is... Um, uh, that has contributed so much to a global dialogue, uh, um, more than perhaps uh, some of the higher funded um, um, theaters, even of course they do it different and also great work in theater. But um, do you feel, do you detect something in the mood of, on the streets if you go out or in talks? Is there a political change happening? Is there um, um, a talk that issues that perhaps were not always um, on the forefront, like, you know, workers, healthcare workers, or the situation for artists um, on, on the not being part of a state theater. Is there something where you feel there's a movement happening? Is there something in the air where you feel something is changing in society? I think generally in, in politics, um, the acknowledgement that um, this century is also a century where care, um, healthcare, but also for uh, elder for elderly, uh, has to be acknowledged in a total different way. This is something that you can read now a lot. So for this, say, um, field of labor, um, this is a phase where. Um, yeah, of, of reconsideration also in terms of uh, what are the values of this work and what are time, you know, time slots that a person needs from somebody who cares for nurses and so on. Um, apparently, there seems that this could be a push towards an understanding that this is an essential uh, layer of a society in 21st century um, that has been not acknowledged uh, enough. Um, when it comes to uh, other political themes here in, in Berlin, at, at least it's very, very um, um, present um, slogans all over when it comes to <clears throat> evacuating the camps in, in Greece, uh, which, which are camps, and this might not be really on the, on the uh, 
not so pleasant in the US, but uh, the refugee, the refugee camps. Well, yeah, they're, they're camps of um, overloaded by several hundred percent, as in camps that they were made for uh, 3,000 people max, and they're 40,000 <clears> minimum. And now, um, due to political constructions, they're not, uh, they're not permitted to leave the islands. Partly, they're people who um, have been born there and they are now seven, eight years old, you know, and they don't know don't know anything else than these camps totally provisoric any aid comes from not the greek government but <clears throat> uh, private organizations who withdrew now most of their workers and uh, it's a time bomb in terms of uh, the virus because the, the only way the greek government so far reacts is trying to evacuate evacuate some of the uh, people but mainly they keep the line of not permitting them to quit the camps or um and uh, the um overall atmosphere on the islands uh, has very much changed from support they being very supportive i'm talking about the inhabitants of the islands to an increase of racism and just an atmosphere of uh, it's enough why don't these people understand that there's no point in coming to us uh, because they can't proceed they can't go any further because europe uh, locked the iron fence and uh, even accepted greece to uh, break uh, human rights and also um, rights that are granted within the eu as in freedom of uh, where you where you want to move and uh, the freedom to apply for asylum and things like that um but uh, the debate about on the other hand for example culture as being an essential instrument of education and social exchange of uh, an, an essential platform where also you can deal with different concepts and you know uh, experiences within a society other than in a, on a political level um this debate has not started yet but i'm i guess is is very needed uh, to come um because who knows what will be uh, on the bill that we're all going to pay for all these tremendous amounts of billions that have been just you know thrown in, into the European and uh, market as, as well as just in, within every country so that the thing keeps going. Um, but this is a bill that we're going to have to pay all of. And um, there will be surely a lot of debates about how essential has been the work that we all have been doing within the cultural sector, what's needed, what, what, what does it help. And um, so there is also about defending the freedom of art. Because as soon as you can explain, as soon as, as soon as a politician can explain what this piece was good for, this might be easier for him or her to also kind of um, explain why there was a funding for it. So to be completely um, integrated in a pedagogical uh, context, um, arts, however, are not uh, an extension of uh, of teaching. You know, there must be a freedom. That has been had been uh, protected quite well, at least here in uh, in Germany, where I guess they will be needed to defend it at some point soon. Inside Europe, uh, we've seen now borders appear very strongly. Even within Germany, there were for some time borders between certain regions. Where here in Switzerland, there have been certain regions that have been asked because they're in the countryside for people not to come and visit those regions for people that have, have been houses. So these are struggles about suddenly that, that, that have been a challenge to the, to the utopian project of the European Union or, or actually quite pragmatical um project to 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 improve the situations um on, on a european level so these will be big questions in the aftermath as well to talk about and i'm particularly afraid like what's gonna be happening if some countries start having less infected people sooner than others will they how long will then will they keep those borders closed mm. And in the end, it's the same thing about the territories in the cities as well. We, from the moment on, which is not yet a situation in New York, but in, in Germany, in the last weeks, we've been starting the, all these discussions about what to open first and when. And as long as it was about closing, I think we 
there was quite a solidarity in the air between all the political parties. But now, as soon as it's about opening, it's very much about lobbyism. So there have been certain regions where the car shops were the first ones to open because they're important for the other places. The furniture shops were the ones that had apparently the, the strongest connection to politicians in other uh, places. There were in, in Estonia, I think that the, the restaurants seem to, for whatever reason, still open or, or, or uh, partly open and they seem to have a good connection. And in this race, obviously, theater is, uh, seems to have a very bad connection to politics because in Germany, nobody mentions really that outside of the feuilleton discussions. Mm. And um, how, how is the mood? What do you feel about uh, among artists or the theater, theater community you hang, you hang out with? Is it people say it's going to be a, just a break, it's a, it's a pause button? Or um, you know, do people feel it's going to be a real um, a seizure? In in the US, there are predictions that a third of all nonprofits will close, whether they're theater communities or, or also uh, arts community projects, but also supporters, foundations um, will most probably not be able to, to refund and going out. So um, it, is in Germany there any, um, any, any, any sense of doom or do people feel we're going to rebuild it's a chance we can uh, see make it better than before that'll be nice <laughs> if we could hear this um yeah it's it, it there there are not many official voices about this like um like if you talk to um, like fellow artists of course like at, at first everybody was like coping with the situation and there was this kind of special first aid program which mm -hmm. um, I think comforted everybody a little bit because everybody had the feeling okay you can apply very easily and you get some drops of water um, without a big like bureaucratic um, burden um, and it's more in the long run I think um, where we can yeah where we have to talk about now and um, there are no answers yet and I'm, it, it, I think it will have a severe impact of um, many things like um, as well, like the economic situation as well as of, um, yeah, of content, like what will be shown when we open the theaters again and um, who will get support and so on. And there is, yeah, there's hardly like uh, outside the feuilleton, outside the cultural field, it's not really mentioned. It was mentioned in the beginning, like, oh, what a pity the theaters are closing and oh, oh what a pity, like the festivals are um, closed. Um, but now it's all about con con consume, actually. It's about how do we get people back to buy products and, you know, to, to serve the economy, but nothing more. A little bit education. I mean, a bit, that's a discussion too. Like, how do we deal with the situation of the, students of course and uh, in schools um, and that's it's very chaotic I feel um, but culture is really yeah massage studio and culture as you said it's maybe um, what we call like there's this discussion about being system relevant or not and it mm -hmm. um, doesn't seem to be this in there yeah, through the official glasses it could be for the theater scene also a bit a chance to say we might look at other spaces again. I've seen site-specific work quite a bit disappearing in Berlin. For instance, if you apply for money, you need to have what they call a Spielstättengenehmigung. It's a kind of a paper that says, okay, the Hau Theater or the Sophienseele or another theater is your partner in this. And then it's normally happening inside those spaces. And, um, if those spaces in their way, in their architectonic constellations are dangerous, maybe not only this year, but even next year, I'd be curious to see if, if, if theater makers that are kind of, in the end, organizers of the social coming together can then, if that public space theater is not available, um, work outside. I've been part of a beautiful rehearsal here of Massimo Furlan's uh, new piece. He's a Swiss-based uh, artist and he is creating a walk in the night through the forest, which is obviously a piece that totally 
can happen. Uh, we have in Berlin and in Santiago de Chile a piece that is an app basically where you listen to stories that were of people that in the 70s and 80s have had to deal with surveillance and uh, dictatorship um, in particular places and, and you can listen to these pieces out in the city and that's actually in the moment in as far as I know the only theater piece if you want to call it a theater piece in Berlin totally visitable. You can download the app now and you can go for a walk and listen to these testimonies. So these forms of, of site-specific works will probably be a way also to connect with the, the needs of people to, to be out there again once they're allowed to. And how are you guys uh, spend, spend your days? Do you look at online um, performances? Uh, do you look at the, the virtual gallery uh, walkthrough? Uh, do you look at colleagues who put up some content fast or something they already had? How, how, what do you think of all of it? Um, yeah, I follow it a little bit, but I, um, <clears throat> at first I had the feeling, okay, there was such a rush in just, you know, going into the digital world and all those streamings and all those, um, yeah, this, like the, the transfer into this, uh, into the screens, um, which I didn't really enjoy, like, um, I think like from a scientific, uh, perspective, of course, it's interesting, like to look at, uh, documents and to see even like especially the the ones yeah the older like documents that came popped up uh, and so on that's interesting but um i don't really enjoy it <laughs> so i was trying to uh, look more at the trees and the sky so <laughs> but now of course uh, maybe it's good to to find this kind of arrangement and see a little bit like what yeah what has been done and um to kind of come up with new ideas as well. I watched Klaus Michael Grüber's uh, Winterreise, which yeah. was for back example. in 77, the empty uh, Olympic Stadium. Yeah, stadium built yeah. but that's one of those old documents and suddenly you see it, that's fantastic, I think, uh, to, to get them, like, like open the archives, it, it's interesting, um, yeah. But, but I also saw quite a good live experiment by the Kammerspiele. Um, I think you had Toshiki Okada in your uh, Seedle yeah. talk some weeks yeah. ago and uh, they did uh, an experimental version where they didn't show at all the recording of the piece but the actors performed on Zoom as we are talking right now the text which is talking about people that are back in their home not talking a lot about sex but not having it and so it totally in a way it made total sense because I don't know how many singles are out there, maybe not being able to use Tinder anymore to connect. And True, so. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Okada, who also said um, he does some, try to do some directing work and now he works with about monologues, which he always does. So well, he found it interesting that all of a sudden the actor shares the same space on his screen. Then he does as the director. You know, normally uh, the actor listens more or is, uh, you know, not a tool, but you know, he lit fulfills the the vision of the director. But all of a sudden, he, they are have the same size, uh, my screen, and the same voice, and you don't talk over each other. You have to listen. So he feels uh, something. Uh, in a way, it was something interesting and. Um, and of course, there's the old Japanese idea anyway of the screen, you know, the screen that's painted that hides something that's not there. So, um, but uh, of course, he, he can't wait to, um, to, um, to get back. So are you guys uh, reading uh, material? Uh, do you read books or something or you listen to something you also rediscover? Daniel, also, maybe you say about something about uh, what you watch or not and um, Yeah, I, I enjoy literature a lot at the moment and also reading to each other. This is something that uh, but this is private, you know, that there's not so much time normally, and now you can use it more for this. And um, also, I benefit from, I guess, we all that we're not alone. So there's just, we can just focus uh, more on what normally is maybe not so, <clears throat> so much in the mm -hmm. center as in time together. And what can we do together? What do we want to, what do we want to speak about? Um, and it's, it's just 
great. I mean, there, there's uh, um, for for me, this is a fantastic time that personally that uh, could really, um, <clears throat> you know, continue to be like that a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, also books are fantastic performances. Pictures are fantastic uh, pieces if you get, spend time with them. So I'm also I don't think that. Um, that uh, <clears throat> there's too much the need of kind of replacing uh, uh, the the or trying to you know kind of recreate the the notion of being together on huge 100 200 people zoom face parties i mean that's fantastic uh, as an experience once but it's not it's not a it's not um it doesn't replace to be in the same space together. Um, I think one thing that um, there has been all this debate about bubbles, social bubbles and uh, media bubbles and where we get our information from, from who, about who do we know how they are and what they think. Um, so one chance could be to, um, <clears throat> to develop new technologies, perhaps outside Tinder, or perhaps, I don't know, I've never used it, but uh, uh, where, where you would come, uh, across somebody perhaps also with other questions than dating um as in how what what people might want to share mm -hmm. uh, i'm talking about the global audience that is globally <clears throat> also a performer because we're many many at least um uh globally are capable to you know meet you on this level so why should i care about a performance artist in berlin as i normally do you know i can speak to someone in well, I could use the time uh, that way. So I'm trying that in, in seminars that I'm giving at the moment um, to encourage people and also myself to just, you know, how is that called? Reach out or, you know, find, just get out of this bubble of who you could contact anyway and to just uh, make personal encounters that are independent from, <clears throat> from the space the, uh, as we're normally very much related to where we are and that is with who we speak, you know, and whose work we're watching. So in, in, in a way, it's a liberation of, or a flattening um, of what, what the, glo global, uh, the globe is and where, with who I speak, you know? Uh, it just depends on time zones. So I think this is um, a potential that perhaps can be explored more as we're, as we're uh, less traveling and moving. That could also change uh, the, you know, the scope of where we are this uh, global notion um, of we all have the same problem because everyone has to kind of defend against uh, the potential infection and has to be solidaric with those who then would suffer a lot from it. Um, it, it will, like it already started in Germany, also globally it started to split up again into nations and more nations other than Mr. Trump is saying us first we need the vaccine first you know and uh, so th there's a counter movement to, to this global notion um, that makes it maybe even more important to cross borders on this level of one-to-one -one communication or small group yeah. communications and other other strategies and exchanging other things than um, how are you you know yeah Right. So, so Helga and Sam, what are you listening to or re reading? What are the books you are looking? What's your um, input you are getting? Well, I was I was really diving into um, audio um, recordings that I did, like um, starting in November, um, with I made a series of um, interviews with um, ambassadors like on the question and other experts on the question how does a country celebrate its like country how do you celebrate um your country so i was totally busy in um yeah like like transcribing those uh recordings and creating those yeah creating the script actually so no further input uh from my side um i mean i i tend to listen to to radio and feature a lot anyway like uh while taking a shower or while while riding the bicycle or whatsoever. So there's a lot of like on this like audio input, there's there's a lot. But I learned how to, well, there now I, I don't know the word, like um pikieren. What is the English word for pikieren? Tomaten pikieren. Oh it's, it's <laughs> spike to spike, spike? plants. Yeah. Yes, there is always Sometimes. like an experiment. I, each day yeah. I do a little experiment in what, like, how to, yeah, learn a new like thing and spike, spike, 
Tomatoes I think, or spicy, one? I don't know. Yeah, splicing, okay. maybe. Uh, you connect different plants to each other. And, uh, uh, no, 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 so, I'm not, not connecting, but I'm like, when they grow a little, you, yeah. you plant them and you pot. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So you do gardening work. Yeah, great. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I t uh, started to enter the universe of Thomas Pynchon. I don't know if the curfew will be long enough for this, but uh, <laughs> and, um, but he requires time. Good, Stefan. What are you? Are you? Are you immersing in uh, in in books, literature, or do you experience the moment you're in your room? Is there? Uh, yes, I'm mostly through a book that Helgard recommended to me last summer, which is Julia C's um, book about uh, Unterleuten, it's called. It's a very German thing. I don't think this is translated into other languages about life on a countryside and how it's intervened by windmills um, that are set up for wind uh, power energy uh, generators. Uh, but uh, we're also finding quite some uh, good time now, which is a good thing to to revise our uh, own book, which we're we've been, I think, for seven years now, uh, struggling to to publish our book about all our works and so on, and it's it's been delayed and delayed and delayed again. And now I think we're really on. We're we're close to. I think in June it it should be out. Fantastic. That is a fantastic idea. So we hear from Hemony Remini Protocol where the situation is serious but not existential. Um, the company is open for business, as we hear. So if any great theaters are listening, you know this might be a good time to catch them when you sometimes couldn't. It's uh, also a bit uh, uh, stunning to hear that your great companies are successfully has such an impact on the scene. Is so deeply worried. Uh, so also for your, for your lives and for your livelihood and to also you know pay your wages and care for your families and i hope that uh, germany and the uh, city of berlin will you know recognize for you but also for your colleagues that the enormous uh, contribution you have made to world theater um and uh, and perhaps who knows maybe we'll see one day a tinder uh, rimini protocol project you know or uh, something else where you where you um and do something where you kind of a, a spiel light an instructor of people and getting together you're such masters in it but always with a social political and historical context so thank you um, um for joining and uh, perhaps uh, who knows how long this goes in we might we we, we check in again um, and hear an update um, of your situation it's great that all three of you could make it it's a big honor i really so sad that the brooklyn 100 percent uh, did not happen um, everybody has been waiting in new york city for this because we have done it in over 30 cities and it's stunning that it didn't happen in new york i think the philadelphia version was out there to the credit of bam they got you in there um, so um, it's a uh, it's a big loss for the city actually just uh, one thing i just came to yeah. my mind um all these theaters uh, in Germany, at least they're announcing their live streaming or their streaming of old pieces. But actually for whoever wants to see a 100% piece or any other of our performances on our website, Rimini uh, Protocol, you'll find it. Um, most of our performances are all the time free available for people who love watching theater mm -hmm. on the screen. Um, uh, some of them are quite well documented, others a bit less. Yeah. And there's also a lot of radio plays for German speakers, German listeners, um, all for free. So, yeah, maybe you could also do a schedule and formally have during the week this and this and this, and one of you is there and introduces it. So you have a little. Uh, streaming like the like the, the show with it but yes it's a tremendous resource you're very open with your work you share it you know it's all available it's often unsinkable in the united states with all the complications of recording artwork and um so thank you and i hope uh, your listeners uh, will be able to join us for guy Regie jr from haiti jalia bakat tunisia um, we're going to have peter sellers the great director and uh, and oscar eustace and uh, tony torn um thanks you for listening, we know how busy these days are. We need great theater and performance. We also need a great audience, a participating audience. So it means a lot uh, for us that you took the time. And you guys, I uh, hope you have a good dinner um, wherever you are in Berlin and in uh, Luzerne. And um, um, I can't wait uh, the day that you come back and we have a single evening with you in New York City. At the Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks everybody for listening. For